I just got this brand new Bluetti solar generator, which is the Elite 200 V2. And I wanna see how long will it run my refrigerator as if the grid was out. So I'm not gonna be connecting any other power to this at this time and just see how long the battery will run my refrigerator. This is just a typical refrigerator. It's full, I'm getting 2.8 watts of draw, which isn't showing on the screen, which is normal. And I just want to know if I had to use this in an emergency, how long it would last. So we're starting with a clean slate. We're gonna be able to track exactly how many kilowatt hours it uses as well as how long. Now, one of the things I've really liked about Bluetti is their app is really easy to use and I can add my system very quickly. This literally took less than 60 seconds. All I had to do is turn on my location and find the unit and add it to my app. Now, I've never had this issue before, but when I clicked on my Elite 200, my app kept crashing and my phone kept telling me I needed to fix it by clearing my cache and stuff like that. And I tried that. But even still, it was not working. This was really frustrating. I tried for probably five minutes just trying to get this to work. In the end, it kept crashing like this. Don't know why it was happening. Even logging out and logging back in didn't seem to do anything. So Blue Eddy needs to take a look at that for sure. Now, just after a few hours, we're already down 18% off of this and only 0.28 kilowatt hours used. I'm going for... 10 hours and 30 minutes and we've used 50% or 53% of the whole battery. We've used 0.88 kilowatt hours. Now I originally started the test at 11 a.m. the previous day and after about 20 hours this was finally down to 2%. I was truly impressed that it ran my fridge for 20 hours and squeezing out every last drop of energy from the battery. I ended up getting about 1.53 kilowatt hours out of the system and it ran for almost two hours longer before it finally shut off. So you can see this red blinking light here. That means no power, it won't turn on the AC output or anything. So I'm gonna put in the wall charger and see if I can wall charge this unit while still running the fridge, basically have pass through energy. And this is not turning back on. So at first I was a little concerned because I had wall input, but then I realized after it reached 1% of battery capacity, then the inverter will finally let itself turn on and start running the fridge while wall charging. So I love that feature to have the pass through UPS function. It technically ran for about 22 hours, but part of that included the wall charging. So I wanna clear this out and just make sure that the information on this meter is totally fresh. I want to see how much power it takes to recharge the battery. So I plugged it into my wall outlet with this meter, but the meter started flashing and it said that it was charging so fast that it was going to damage the meter. So I had to unplug it because I couldn't use this monitor to figure out the input. So of course, I'm gonna go back to the app to see if I can adjust the wall charging rate and it keeps crashing. This was infuriating. So in the end, I decided I'll just charge up to 50% using the wall and not track its input and work on the solar, which is a thousand watts of input with up to 60 volts and 20 amps at the max input. Now it uses a normal XT60 connector, which is awesome because that's become very common, but it has two MC4 inputs. You just want to make sure that you're getting the DC1 and the DC2 not mixed up. So I just plug it right here into the front of the system and I'm gonna steal the solar panels that have been running my AC 300. And we can see we're over the 60 volts at 62.3 volts and we're getting 650 watts. So I'm gonna to have to adjust these solar panels and how they're connected. And I'm gonna use these 210 watt panels that I've had for a long time using my patent pending solar panel legs. These legs can be found at poweredportablesolar.com. And I've invented these because I could never find anything on the market for an easy way to set up solar panels just on the ground. I'm gonna connect these first two together in one group and the second two together in another group and then use this branch connector so I have one positive and one negative connector. Once I run that back to the AC 300, we can see we're down to about 400 watts, but our voltage has dropped to within the safe range for the Elite 200 V2. So I connect it up and voila, I've got solar input and I was actually very surprised, pleasantly surprised to see that this got up to 550 watts and that's only on one of the two solar inputs. So theoretically, I could actually get more, but I wanna see how many amps and volts are going in. So I'm gonna take another set of MC4 branch connectors, put the single side into my input cables, and I'll connect the XT60 adapter to one of the open connection sides on the other side of the branch connector. 
This will allow me to check the voltage and amperage. So using my clamp meter, I can see I'm getting 19.5 amps to go into the system. And using my probes into the open connectors of the branch connector, I can see that I'm getting about 28.5 volts input VMP. So when I do 28.5 multiplied by 19.5, I get 556 watts, which is really close to what's reading out on the screen. So I definitely like that. But I also want to see if I can wall charge this while solar charging it, because that would be super fast charging into this 2000 watt hour battery. I'm just going to use my AC300 that I've got right here, plug it in and see if I can get the full input. And would you look at that? We're getting 500 watts from solar and 1800 watts from wall charging. I'd have to say that one of my favorite things about the Elite 200 V2 is the fact that I'm able to get 20 amps of input going into this right now, just on one of the solar inputs. I'm pretty certain that Bluetti designed it to where you could have 10 amps and 10 amps on these split. So this cable feels really warm right now. I would not recommend doing this long term. You definitely want to split the input so that way you're not exceeding more than 10 amps on each of these cables. They're just too thin. But the fact that I was able to do it on the Elite compared to the AC300, I couldn't do that on here. That's pretty impressive. Right now I'm getting 555 watts and we were only getting around 400 watts on the AC300. So in some ways the charge controller is better on the Elite versus the AC300 in terms of what it'll let through on a single leg. But again, don't do that. Now, if I really wanted to fast charge this, I could have a gas generator recharging this as well as solar input. And I can get this whole thing recharged in under an hour, basically. That is also very impressive for a grid down situation because I got about 20 to 21 hours of runtime for my fridge with this. I like that. I can basically exchange 20 hours of runtime off of a battery for my fridge for one hour of gasoline recharging, as long as that's mixed with solar. And honestly, I think if I were to double the solar input and actually get the full thousand watts of solar input, this would easily be able to sustain my fridge and a freezer long term if there was a blackout. Because I think if I added a freezer to this, I'd get closer to 10 to 12 hours of runtime. So that's enough to just barely get through the night. And then I could recharge it off of solar the next day as long as I had a thousand watts of input. Now the major drawback that I see is that I only got 1.5 kilowatt hours out of the two kilowatt hours of battery capacity. That is not as high as I would like it to see. That's close to 75% efficiency doing a real world test. We would probably get different numbers if I was doing just a 0.2C discharge, which would be like like a 400 watt constant load on this and see if it would run for about five hours. My guess is that it would be higher than 75%, but I wanna know real world how this is gonna perform and that's why I did it on the fridge. Now for me, I have two refrigerators and a large upright freezer. I'd also want to keep my Wi-Fi running as well as the ability to run certain appliances in my kitchen, such as a toaster or a microwave. And all of that's very easy to do by plugging directly into this. So it definitely could perform when needed, but I don't see the ability to add expansion batteries to this. So, so this is one of those systems where you get what you get, unlike the AC200 Max, which is another unit from Bluetti. With the AC200 Max, you can even add these B300K batteries or their other batteries that Bluetti carries, but not with this one. So this is just one box, you get everything you need, and that's it. I do like the fact that the solar input is high on this though. Now the thing that surprised me the most was the weight. When I picked this up, as I've carried literally hundreds of others of solar generators that are similar in size, this one feels really heavy. I don't know the exact weight, I'll put that right up here, but it felt like it was close to 50 pounds. But I know a lot of the people that purchase these systems are looking for small, portable, lightweight items. But the easiest thing would be just to put this on a cart, like a hand truck or a little furniture dolly. Those are cheap, you can get them anywhere, and then you can move this around really easily. So I would say that this unit is enough for portable backup power. You're gonna have a little bit lower efficiency than some other inverters out there, but the solar input's gonna be a lot better than other similar size units on the market. So in that regard, I do think it's a good unit for specifically running something like a fridge and a freezer at the very most. I wouldn't run much more than that. So if you just need the basics, then I do think this would be a good option. Thank you to all my Patreon supporters. If you wanna get direct access to me and have one-on-one -on -one chats on preparedness or whatever in general, then go to patreon.com slash Minuteman Prep. Look at the Bluetti Elite 200 V2. Man, that's a mouthful. If you're looking for some simple power that's portable. Thanks guys, be prepared. See you on the next video.